All right, welcome again, Military Guna TV. <clears throat> Thank you very much for tuning in. And this is Brighton versus Arsenal. Arsenal versus Brighton. And I hope we can get on the winning ways continually. Um, I, I, I pray that this is a stepping stone for Arsenal to at least build some momentum and try to get at least a winning streak going. So, as I said before, Arsenal versus Brighton. Brighton versus Arsenal and this is another match day another game that we have to win and we have to build some momentum and let me get into a bit of insights before I go anywhere now Brighton won home and away league games against Arsenal last season massive they never they, they have never won three in a row against the Gunners in a league competition before so that is a big state and you know what does that mean Arsenal, we are record breakers and we always seem to tend to break a record. Whenever there is a record, we try our best to break it. And that is a fact. Um, second insight, after winning the, their first two top flight away games against Brighton, 4-0 um, in 1979 and 1-0 in 1981, the Gunners are winless in their last five games, five visits to face the Seagulls draw one losing four and that is not good so this is the best time for us to turn around things go to their home smash them and create a new record since we're breaking an arm record against us we must can create record for us this time around insight number three brighton have lost their final third game their final their final league game in in just what are so my bad let me go again. Brighton has lost their final league game in just one of the last seven calendar years. One win five and drew one. So this is their final league game for the year, and they have only lost <clears throat> one out of seven. And that is massive. That is actually massive for them. And actually, they lost it against Ipswich Town in the championship in 2016. So that's a good record for them. And this is a record that Arsenal should try and break. Um, fifth point, Arsenal lost their final league game in both 2018 and 2019 on um, 5-1 versus um, Liverpool and 2-1 versus Chelsea and they have not lost their final league game in three consecutive calendar years since doing so between 1947 and 1949 so that's, it has been a long while since we've lost um, their, our final league game for the calendar year so I think this is something that we should keep on and as, as I said again this is a record that Brighton would want to set, but I think it's a record that Arsenal should try and to keep on to. Final point, um, Brighton have won just one of their 16 Premier League games in 2020. Though that the victory did came against Arsenal back in June. I remember when Mopai did that thing against Berlin and we all were upset and whatever, whatever. But we have to move on from these things. And uh, <clears throat> we have to... and. Further, no team in the Premier League history has won as few as one home game across an entire calendar year, excluding teams that were promoted slash relegated. That is not no statistics as it's quite serious and of much importance. But as I said, we have to try and break some of these statistics that are going against us and try to build new ones that will go in our favor. Um so line up. Let's go into the lineup and um, previous lineup against Chelsea. Moving to the lineup against Chelsea, um, we had Burnley in goal. We started a 4 2 3 1 formation. Burnley in goal had Bellerin, Olden, Pablo Mari, Kirintin as the back four. Um, Mohamed El Nini, Granit Xhaka in the midfield pairing. Bakaya Saka, Emil Smith Rowe, and Martinelli as the mid midfield three in front of the double pivot. And Alexander Lacazette up top. Now, I would tweak this a little bit. Um, not just a personal thing, but I think that this game will take will do a lot in regards to physicality and a lot of running on the pitch. Now, this would be my changes. Um, we have Hector Bellerin coming out, bringing in Maitland Niles. Rob Holding will stay. Pablo Mar will stay. We have heard the sad news about Gabriel Magalesh. So I think that it will be out for possibly two weeks. And I, I wish him um, strong recovery. And I hope that you um, come back as fit as possible and better than before. Um, Karen Tierney on the left. And in the midfield, I will still play Mohamed El Nini. And I'll take up Granit Xhaka 
and bring in Danny Sabayos because this is a game in which we have a lot of close control, compact midfield area, and Granit Xhaka don't play well when he have that much amount of persons around him moving in about, and that causes problem for him. So we need people who is more mobile, even though Danny Sabayos is not as mobile, but he has more to his game than um, Granit Xhaka. We know that he scored a free kick, and that is not something that we should get hyped up about because he's the type of person where he puts in a performance one out of five one out of six so this is one we have to um work around and uh, try to see how best we can move away from the old granite jacker era in front of them i'll keep the attacking front uh, attacking three and which is Saka on the right emil smith row in the attacking midfield position and um gabriel martinelli over on the left we know that martinelli is a dangerous player and i think Saka. Um, Nicholas Pepe should look at what Saka is doing on the right hand side and know that these are the things that we're expecting from him. So, up front, I'll pull Lacazette, bring in Pierre Emerick Aubameyang back into the fold. That is, the, that is if he's fit and available to play. If he's not, well, we'll play with Lacazette as well. But there's a strong link that Lacazette might move on in this January um, to replace Diego Costa at Atletico Madrid. So these are the things that I will get him done. So back to the starting lineup. Leno in goal. Maitland Niles at right back. Rob Holding, Pablo Mari, centre back pairing. Um Karen Tierney at left back. Granite Xhaka out. Um Dennis Abias in. Mohamed Elini remains in his position. Attacking three in front of the double pivot remains the same. Saka, Emil Smith Rowe, Martinelli. And if Abameyang is fit, we'll definitely go with Pierre Emerick Abameyang instead of Alexander Lacazette. So on the bench, we'd have a lots, of, lots of firepower on the bench. We have Eddie Nketiah, Lacazette, Nicolas Pepe. These guys can come on and change the game. They can increase the tempo or, or um, what's so. But Gabriel Martinelli has to start. We need that We need that firepower and we need that fear factor from him. Okay, so that is my starting lineup for the, um, for the Arsenal versus Brighton. Brighton versus Arsenal. Um, put it in the comment and drop and tell me what you think or give me a lineup that you what you don't agree with and tell me please put in the comment whatever, whatever i said in the starting lineup or you don't agree with me tell me um i'm going for some likes um whatever comment gets the most likes definitely i would i like it bring it forward to my next video let you guys see it and also i'm going for the like like target so like the video i want at least 30 likes or more the lowest the minimum likes this video should get would it definitely has to be 30 so like the video comment with the most likes or we'll speak about it in the next in the next video this has been military guna tv like share and subscribe i am out